So it's the night before Baldy Marathon, 20 miler. Got my little map drawn out, a little punch card. So you gotta punch in B A L D Y, different places on the course. Got some gels laid out, some uh, snacks, made some cookies. Yeah, got a cheap $3 headlamp. And maybe I'll bring my action camera and get some video footage. Got my clothes all laid out. Let's see. What do we got here? Some shoes, some gloves, pants, socks, etc. Shorts, windbreaker, and a pack me jacket in case it gets cold. Probably be down to 40 degrees in the night. Just won't want to stay warm if it gets real cold. So here we got some dogs. Look at these. Oh, they're friendly, I think. Yeah, kind of friendly. Ooh, they look like wolves. Look at that. Oh, they're mixed as they're husky malamutes. So here at the uh, Baldy Marathon, and the parking lot's way down there. You got about a two mile hike to get up here. And unfortunately, it looks like my camera was powered on while I was hiking up here. And the battery may almost be worn out. That's not good. So, anyway, here we are. Started the Baldy Marathon in 2017. It's 20 mile laps, about two miles a day. And uh, I think I'm just going to do one lap and see how it goes. So here we got some starters at the uh, Baldy Marathon. There's the RD, and uh, we're waiting for people before we get started. So we're starting the Baldy Marathon. 9 a.m. start for one lap on the all-in starter. There's nobody else. So, be a little lonely out here. About 20 minutes in, going up Beginner's Hill, trying to take it easy because we got a lot of steep climbing. So, just walking up here. Yeah, heart rate's about 150. So. Hopefully, we're going to finish the first lap and uh, see how we feel. Maybe get some video footage. I'm going to be going up there later, Mount Baldy. So, we're on Beginner's Hill coming up to GPS Marker 1 in about 300 feet or so. So, we're going to be connecting to this trail up here. I already know it because I've been on this course before, but uh, it's called the RL Trail, Ronnie and Lori or something like that. You know, the uh, RD comes up with some funny names for the trails and uh, roads around here, but uh, it's a big secret so I can't tell you. So, uh, technically, we're in the wilderness, we're supposed to have a permit, but uh, I didn't sign a permit because there's no place for me to get a permit right here. They should have a permit box there, but they don't. So, anyway, we're here on the RL Trail. here on the RL Trail. Pretty good, it's only about uh, 30 minutes in. And going kind of slow here. I don't want to trip. And uh, I don't want to burn out my legs. It's a nice little single track trail. So 
So we got about 0.2 miles to the second uh, GPS point, but that's not the actual travel distance. That's if we were to go straight up vertically, which some people do. I kind of call that cheating. So I'm going to take the trail. So heading up to that peak, Eric's Plunge. And of course, a shortcut, Cheater's Way. We're taking the trail again. So there's a little fork here. This goes over to some of the other mountains and uh, we're going up this way. We still got 0.26 miles. My battery's showing a red, so I'm gonna be getting a full video. I may cut out. I'm gonna have to change the battery. So aside from maybe a quarter mile of single track that was mile downhill and mostly have just up, up and up. There you got a view of the valley. There's Mount Baldy, and there's a city or Claremont way down there. And uh, looks like looks like it's going to be an awesome day out of here. You guys are missing out. So you can see the start and finish building over there. It may not show up too well in the video, but I can see it clearly with my eyes in plain sight. They're supposed to be starting. It's almost 10 a.m. now been out about an hour and if I sit here for another five minutes I could probably see the people starting see how many people start but I guess I'm gonna keep going so how far are you guys going this is it, this is it? This is it oh okay uh, a little 20 mile loop so we're here at Eric's plunge and uh, didn't bring my trekking poles on the first half of the loop because uh, aside from this little plunge here, I don't think I really need them. But uh, hopefully I'll be okay going down here. It's a little slippery. And uh, you don't want to fall. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe I should have brought the trekking poles. My camera's a little bit unstable here, too. It's kind of wobbling. I hope it stays good. dicey out here.
about halfway down I guess. Yeah. <laughs> this little part right here. A little slippery. down Eric's plunge. Oh, this big rock hit me right here. Oh, that hurt. Got on my Kayana, Kahana six shoes, and uh, there's the view. That's Eric's plunge up there. Yeah. Some people can really fly down that thing. I kind of went slow, but without the trekking pole, I'd go a little careful. Definitely don't want to go th uh, this way. It's not going to be fun. So, so far so good. So they got some nice flowers. Look at it. The bees are buzzing. Look at those bees. Not a care in the world except to get pollen and make honey. I guess somewhere around here is GPS 3. It 
says like 30 feet. So, got a nice canyon down there. A few other peaks over there. That's uh, Eric's Plunge and Mount Baldy. Not sure if I got that on video or not, but went past GPS point three, and I think that's the ridge that I'm supposed to be going on, Satan's Ridge. Uh, not that other farther ridge over there. So I'm going to be heading down. I kind of overshot uh, GPS three point a little bit because there's this little trail. I was kind of curious. I actually wanted to keep taking it all the way over there, but. Uh, You know, I did change the GPS points to some updated GPS points. The old ones that I had, I knew they were good. So I'm not sure if these new updated ones are as good. Yeah, see this is definitely, you don't want to be going up to that peak. So I've gone too far. So if you see this, you've went too far, you got to turn back. So looks like GPS point 3 is actually okay. It's probably an okay place to uh, turn down to Hades. So we're heading down to Hades, and not as bad as uh, Eric's plunge, but uh, at least you know, I overshot a little bit. A little rocky over here, uh, and kind of slow going. This part of the course is really slow for me, at least. Make sure I hook up to the right ridge, which should be that ridge right over there. So, uh, you know, I overshot GPS 3 a little bit, but uh, I'll be getting back to where I'm supposed to be. So we're back on track, Satan's Ridge, 0.3 miles to GPS 4. So this is kind of a nice flat little section here. And kind of a little faint hiking trail in parts along the ridge. And then uh, going to be going down into the valley. Try and get our first punch. The punch B. We'll get it very soon. So we're not a little farther on Satan's Ridge. And you probably could go down that left way, but then you're going to end up in the wrong valley. You want to be on this side. So... I'm going to be heading down this way. Looks like a lot of people have been going around here because I see a lot of what look like sliding footsteps. These two big dugout pieces of dirt here. So, this is where we are at. Going down to Hades now. It's another little ridge that goes up that way. And again, if you go on the left side, you're going to go on the wrong side. If you want to go into this valley here. So, I think the RD, Aaron calls this Hades already. So maybe we're going down to hell right now. So. It's pretty slow going. A lot of obstacles. You got to be careful you don't get some rock falling down on your toe or foot or shin. So going down to hell, it gets kind of hairy. You know, your feet and ankles are going all different kind of angles. With all these rocks and pine cones and everything all over the place. And I'm really inching along right here. <coughs> And this stuff here kind of looks like <clears throat> poison ivy, but I guess it's not. But uh, anyway, there's a balloon. So I don't know how good people are climbing up a bunch of sheet rock, but uh, you know, that's where we came from. Down there, of course, a little just right to where the trees are. But this is GPS 4. We got a valley here. So I will fear no evil as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
We've got to walk through all these rocks. It's yeah, pretty tedious. Rocks start falling. You gotta be careful they don't hurt you. Your feet, your ankles, your shins. And you gotta be careful you don't trip and fall. Kind of slippery, sliding all over the place. The Baldy Marathon. This is what it's about. So we're balancing on this big tree here. Still got to be careful because you can still trip and uh, fall on this tree, on the side of the tree even. Here we go. That's the magic punch. Man, it's hard to punch. There we go. B. Okay, well, it was a little hairy right here because you got this overgrowth, so it's kind of hard to step on the rocks. But uh, it's just a maybe 10, 20 meters. 10 o'clock. Yeah. How'd you get over here so fast? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got his little water filter and he's drinking stream water. So there's impending doom. And I had thought it would be easier to go up that way, but according to the RD, that's much, much harder. So we're just going to go this way. And look at it, you got to go through all these prickly bushes, find a way to get up to the mountain, get up to the road. So I'm literally crawling, using my hands to get up, impending doom. I got stuck in a lot of the prickly bushes up there quite a few times. Haven't been in here in a year. They got a lot of overgrowth now. Picked a wrong, few wrong ways to go. I keep getting stuck in all these prickly bushes. So it's all over the place. And then my my walk MP3 player headphone cable gets gets stuck and gets pulled out. It's a real pain. So we made it to Quitters Road. And I was gonna take a break, but these two guys caught up to me down there in the hill near the molten stream. And uh, they started an hour later than me, so they must have really been going fast. So, we're going to have some salted watermelon. And maybe if I feel like taking my backpack off, have a couple bites of my cookie. Going down Quitters Road here. And, uh, but we're going the right way that you're supposed to go. This is a trail that we used to go up last year, but we decided to extend the mileage, get it closer to 20 miles. So we're supposed to pass that gate over there and then look for a trail to go up. So we got some graffiti over here, people tagging the rocks. So that's the way you came down, Quitters Road down there. Here's the gate. I'm looking for the trail, I don't see it. So I hope I find it. It's supposed to be in about 30 feet. It would be in a GPS marker. Okay, I'm I'm pretty close to GPS eight. I don't see any trail here so I'm getting a little bit concerned. I knew last year's course they changed this part of the course. I hate it when they do that. I don't see any trail here. So 
because they changed the marker for A and now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it. So I don't know which way is Emilio's way, but I guess it's this way. So, I mean, I know where I'm going, I just am not sure where Punch A is, that's the problem. Anyway, a little disappointing. I hate to get lost out here and then waste a lot of time and then not make a cutoff. That would really be a bummer. So I had some cookie, some electrolyte drink, and I wish I had a whole big lunch and a nice protein smoothie. Oh gosh. self support runs are pretty tough. It'd be nice if I had <coughs> a filter and some nice cold stream water right now. That'd be good. Filter the water out. So I guess I'm going up that way somehow. It looks pretty steep. Looks like somebody's been doing some target practice out here. Anyway, it's Emilio's way or whatever path we're supposed to be taking up to find A. It doesn't seem to be anywhere. It looks really steep right here, but I need to start going up this mountain because I know where I'm supposed to be headed. I'm just not sure where he put po Punch A. Now, in terms of a uh, course that has good directions, this definitely isn't one of them. Anyway, I just hope I don't get lost again. That would really, really suck. So I intersected with one of these very faint animal trails, and they're all over this this area. In fact, there's another one right there. I don't know if this is going in the right direction for Punch A or not. And I guess I'm a little disappointed. There should have been better directions. I asked the RD in the, for the race start what were the changes to this course, and he just kind of said, oh, you'll see the trail right away after the gate, and I didn't see any trail, so... What does that tell you? So we're climbing up. Still got a few hundred feet before we should see Punch A somewhere. And uh, there's no trail really out here. I just kind of know where I'm going. I just don't know where Punch A is. I think uh, last year we went up that side. So we're on a different ridge but we're still going to be ending up at the same place, so all's good if I find Punch A. So there's a nice view of the valley below, and it's really steep. I've been trying to zigzag it because I have some pain in my shin if I try and just go straight up vertically like my shins are about to start cramping real bad. So. Uh, all of that rocky terrain and Hades and hell just really tore up my shins and my calves and my ankles and my feet have all kinds of rocks <laughs> in the shoes. I haven't bothered to take my shoes off yet. Uh, so probably around I need to take a break and take my shoes off, get all the rocks and pebbles out of my feet and the socks and whatever. Hopefully I don't have any blisters. I didn't really bring blister care today. Because I said I'm just going 20 miles. I was hoping I didn't need it. And, uh, you know, I can push through blisters for 20 miles, I think, if I have to. Second half is all on trail. So uh, I should be good. Check it out. We've got some nice scenery around here. be nice to camp out here. With someone special. see a little blue ribbon on this tree, but there's no punch A there, that's not it. So we're having a cliff shot raspberry, and we're getting close to <coughs> connecting to the trail that goes back to the start for the first half. Haven't found punch A yet, I hope I haven't missed it, that's going to really suck. 
Man, this RD needs to give much better directions. His directions were were not good. I knew last year's course, if he hadn't moved A, I'd be happy and on my way to punching A. Gee. Very disappointing. Well, this doesn't look good. Unfortunately, as much as I want to say something positive and encouraging, because I would have expected to see Punch A way before here. So, looks like I'm going to have to talk to the RD about the terrible directions again. It's like last year I got lost because of terrible directions. This year I know where I'm going, but he moved Punch A. And I asked him before the race started, what were the changes to the course? He gave me some skimpy answer. Somebody's got to really talk some sense into that RD to give better directions, man. Jeez. Because I could definitely do the other half lap. So I'm sitting here, Emilio's way. Manzanita bushes are around here, pine trees, and other kinds of bushes. Who knows what they're called, these other bushes. And I'm wondering if I'm going to get credit for the lap. Because Punch A was nowhere to be found. Uh, I have to see if the RD is going to let it slide. Or am I going to have to bow out because of terrible directions? I can't believe it. Right before the race, I'm supposed to have an hour presentation on the course. It gave me about 30 seconds to one minute trying to explain the change to the course. Pathetic directions. Anyway, what can I do now, right? Got some giant ants out here. I mean, these things are big. So we're getting up to Candyland. Been out of here five hours and 40 minutes. Punch A was nowhere to be seen. I heard some other people screaming and singing. I think they found Punch A. I guess I really should have bothered the RD a lot more. Explained to me where Punch A was because uh, I definitely must have just missed it somehow but you know I have to see what he says can I go on or do I have to bow out at half a lap so we're finishing up First half lap, come down, gonna see what the RD says, can I go on or is this the end? Oh man, that smells bad. Yeah, how you doing? <laughs> hey man, it's your mission to go on. Hey, there she is. That was the high. <laughs> Did you go up to the top? Not really. No, just a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty far. It's good to see you. Shoes are coming apart. It's a rough course out there. Man. Say hello. Well, hi. hi. <laughs> so we're
we're intersecting with the fire road there, but uh, going back on some more of this stuff. So a lot of fun. Hard on the knees, though. This kind of stuff. Hard on the knees. All right. So you catch the uh, other little single track somewhere over here. Go down along near the ski lift. There it is, right here. We can see it down there. That's where we're going. Look at this dog. He's going the hard way up. Must be their dog. Anyway, we still got a little bit to go. Taking it easy here because a lot of places you can trip. And uh, my tr shoes are getting thrashed on this kind of stuff. Especially in all the skeet, all the rocks like this, when there's no trail. That's really rough on the shoes. We'll get a video clip. Look at these guys are roughing it out going down the hard way. Video. You're not scared? <laughs> oh, okay. So here we're going down some more of this stuff. Let's see if we can get the video here. There we go. to the parking lot where I got my car makeshift aid station got some snacks there and gear for the night so somebody left some steel wool here it's kind of funny I don't know why they'd leave it here but anyway there are the ski lifts we're back to the parking lot where this whole big adventure got started so I got to get to my car and Transition for the night. Still pretty early. It's 3:42. I took about a 20-minute break up at the top notch to, you know, clean out my shoes, have a little water and some salt, and refill my hydration pack. Carrying about maybe 90 liters. It's not quite full. 100-liter bladder. And uh, gonna add some electrolyte powder to it and eat some of my snacks and uh, go climb. Mount Baldy in the night probably and uh, hopefully get the other punches the RD let me go on so I've got permission to continue the race even though I missed punch A anyway here we got the painted rock and I'm gonna see if we find the other punch yep there it is under the rock. So we got L. This is Jenny's crawl. I'm not going to be able to put it on video, but it's hands and feet. Crawl up there, just all the way up to the fire road. So there's the fire road. Yeah, inching up here. Oh, this stuff is really slippery to climb up. It's like you go up two feet and you come back down a foot and a half. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <sighs> Not going anywhere here. 
I think I'm going to have to turn the camera off to get to the top. Maybe I'll go this way. Okay. There we go. Ah! crawl is pretty hard. Alright. So here's the big climb. I'm going to be looking for punch D. Should be pretty soon after the start of this big climb. And then we're going to be going up there. Mount Baldy. Or right up there. And uh, and we're going to be heading down the side of Mount Baldy, get punched Y, come back up, and then go back to the finish line. We'll be done with the second half loop. And there is a time constraint, 13 hours, 20 minutes. So I gotta keep an eye on the time because I've been going pretty slow. People are really fast. I'm amazed. Some guy did the first lap in like three and a half hours. That's really good. So we found punch D, and uh, it's kind of steep coming up here. My fingers are starting to cramp a little bit as I was pushing on the trekking poles and not slip. So there's punch D. Definitely don't want to fall down there. So still going up, up and up. This is pretty tiring. You know I had thought maybe I'd be feeling good after one lap but Realistically, I'm thinking I just want to finish this one lap and be done with it. So there he is, on his way up. Looks like we both got most of the second lap, or second part of the first lap done. Yeah, I think once you get to the top, it's just down and up again. So we came onto another GPS point coming here on the final little climb up to heaven of course there's another name for that mountain but uh, I'm not supposed to tell you because it's a big secret and so a couple other guys they've already punched out Y so they've gone down the side of that mountain back up and they're on their way back to the finish line and I started an hour ahead of them. Wow, they're really fast. So, almost up to the top of heaven. 3.25 miles back to the start and finish. We got punch Y here, the last one. So, we got the right wood clip. We're on the way back. Got all of the Punches up, Jeremy, former United States Marine is here and he's doing good. He's going to finish. We're both going to finish. So we're here at the Mount Baldy sign, 10,000 feet. It's just about 9 p.m. Cutoff is 1020. Got about an hour and 20 minutes to go down three and a half miles. And the good Marine, he's got uh, two hours and 20 minutes, so he's definitely good to go. I gotta hustle a little bit to make the cutoff. So I'm here with the Marine. We're gonna make it. He's got two hours and 20 minutes. I got an hour 20. He's gonna prove the RD wrong. Gave him a thumb down. Said he's not gonna finish one lap. He's gonna finish Number it. one. Number yeah. One. Okay, we're coming up to the finish line. I'm trying to see if I can make it by 10 o'clock. It's pretty close. I think I'm gonna do it. Can you clock me in? I got to hit the bell? Yeah. Okay. I got to touch the bell. Got to ring it. Officially done. What? All right.
I had to... Uh... Alright, we got another finisher. <laughs> he did it. Yeah, 12 hours yeah. on the dot. No likey? Gee, they were, they, these were half the lap and cries and went... They didn't... Yeah. So we got no light here, but uh, give us your opinion here. How is how is the race? Oh, I'm never doing it again. There you go. You're retarded. Okay, about I'll be back next year. About <laughs> are you? Well, what's your opinion uh, here? I'll probably forget how horrible it was and come back. Yeah. What do you think? Pretty good. You gonna do it again? Oh yeah, I'm coming back next September. You gonna do a hundred? Hundred. Ha ha. At least hundred k. some thorn ends after the Baldy Marathon. So this is one of the thorn ends that I pulled out of my leg. And my leg wasn't bleeding during the Baldy Marathon, but after pulling out the tip of this either a yucca plant or the prickly thorn bushes that they have, then it started bleeding. So I got a big bruise where one of these rocks tumbled down on Eric's plunge and hit my lower shin. So what do you get if you finish a Baldy Marathon lap 20 miles? Well, there's the option to purchase one of these.